The new advancement procedures in the first tech challenge have changed immensely for the decode season. And today we're going to break down all those changes so that by the end of this video, you'll know how your team can advance through qualifiers, through regionals, and then getting up to the first world championships. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. And I've coached FTC teams to national championship wins. There's been a pretty major shift in the way that first is defining your FTC advancement procedures. Previously, in the Into the Deep season, you had uh, Inspire first place, winning Alliance captain, second place Inspire, and then so on and so forth. So depending on what you got in that placement, you uh, were able to advance or not advance. There was a inherent problem in this system and that uh, some awards were way more valuable than others. Now, of course, the Inspire Award should still be more valuable than others, but it did put a lot of weight on certain things. It didn't really allow for well-rounded teams uh, to really come out. So they've moved to this more uh, points based system, which I think is a, a really strong setup. So rather than moving on to where you were on a set hierarchical list, it is now points based and those points come and are made up from four main categories. The first category is your performance in the qualification phase. That's a sort of round robin tournament where you're randomly selected with teams. And there's another change to that that's excellent we're going to talk about later. There is your performance in the alliance selection. There's your performance in playoffs. And there is your performance for judged awards. So let's talk first about how you can get points in the qualification phase. Overall, across all four categories, the maximum number of points you can score is 136. That would be first place in every single section of these four main categories. And the minimum amount of points you can score would be two. So let's talk about the qualification phase performance. That is those round robins before the playoffs actually start. Teams are going to be normally distributed from 16 points, if they're in the top, all the way down to two. So you always get a minimum of at least two points from the qualification matches. Now, this is not simply a win or lose. In the past, it used to be you would get ranking points for winning, you get two, for tying, you get one, and if you lose, you get zero. Now, FTC has moved to more what FRC has been doing for a few years, where they also get additional ranking points. So every single qualification match, there are six possible ranking points for you to score. If you win, you get three ranking points. If you tie, you get one ranking point. Then there are three kind of special tasks that you can complete to be able to get additional ranking points. And this is an excellent change because what it means is that if you lose, you no longer get a zero for your ranking points. You are now able to still get at least three depending on how well you do. So even if your team doesn't win, you can still get some ranking points and you won't get pushed back as far down the ranking. So this really helps out teams that have uh, sort of unfair alliance partners or if their alliance robot breaks because all of these things happen so you can still get points to be able to move on there are three tasks you can do this the first task to get yourself one ranking point is the movement ranking point that is your leave and base points and the cool thing about these three specific points is that the point values that are required to be able to move above are going to change depending on the competition you're at so you need lower values for your qualifications, for your regional championships, you're going to need higher values. And then for the first championship, you need even higher values. So it allows first to automatically adjust for what it is that we need. So let's talk about that movement one. That is your leave and base. That is your robot. The leave is your robot has to get itself off of a launch line. So it effectively just has to move off the launch line from the start. Those are three points each time that does. Then for the base, you can be partially supported on the base for five points or fully within the base for another 10 points or not another, sorry, for 10 total points. If you can get two robots fully supported by that 18 inch base tile, it actually has a total of 30 points altogether. 10 for one robot basing, 10 for the second robot basing fully, and then an additional 10 for both of them being able to fully base. So there's lots of combinations you could do to be able to get that. So really quick, if you're finding value in this content, it would really help me out if you would consider liking and subscribing to the video. It really does help me reach more robotics enthusiasts like you. The next kind is the goal ranking point. And this is the number of artifacts that are scored through that square. So the total number of artifacts that you're able to put through that square, whether they're overflow or whether they are classified. This does not count as the scored total. This counts as the total number. And in this case, at your... Re at your Local events, you need 36 artifacts total. If you're to break that out and split that out into two robots, you need to get on average 18 artifacts per robot 
in a two and a half minute period. That means on average, you need to be scoring one artifact every 8.3 seconds, roughly. So let's say one artifact every eight seconds. So that should definitely be doable for a lot of teams to be able to get that ranking point. And your last one is that pattern ranking point, and that's your ability to get patterns above the threshold point. Those are patterns scored at the end of Teleop and scored at the end of Autonomous. So for, for your local events, you only need to get 18 points. The nice thing about that is if you got nine in auto and nine in teleop, and let's just assume that you put in nine purple objects, that would get you at least six correct out of the nine total. And six times additional two points is 12 points. That would mean you get 24 points. That's well above that official regional point. So for those first regional points, if you can just throw in all purple and just ignore the pattern, you will still earn a ranking point for that. uh, And it may be a good strategy for your team to take. Now, I fully expect this to get more challenging as the season goes by, but at least for those regional events, not having to be super concerned about getting a pattern early on in the season can be a great place to get started. So once you do all those ranking points, what they do is they take your average ranking points across all the qualification rounds. So it is not your total number of rank points altogether, but the average number of ranking points that you scored throughout that qualification. Then they normally distribute it, Uh, You can take a look at the full equation here in 4.11 if you want to. And then you get either 16 points or 2 points. Then for alliance, it is 21 points minus the alliance that you are part of. So rather than having a captain and a lead having these different rules between them, it's now simply alliance 1 gets both these points. So if you were the first alliance seed and you were the first pick for that first alliance, both of you would get 20 points. There's no longer a distinction between who's the lead of the alliance or the captain they used to call it and who is the partner inside of that alliance. It's simply you're part of that alliance, you get 20 points. If you're on alliance number four, you take 21 minus four, that's 17 points for being on that alliance, regardless of whether you were the lead or not. Then, of course, there's the playoff advancement. First place gets 40 points, second place gets 20, third place is 10, fifth place is fourth, and anything else in those playoffs doesn't score any points. Then it comes down to judge awards. The Inspire Award is, of course, the big deal. You get 60 points for Inspire first, 30 points for Inspire second, and 15 points for Inspire 3rd place. Now, not all events will have a Aspire 3rd or even an Inspire 2nd, or even a 2nd or 3rd on the other judged awards. It depends on the size. And then there's a full table down here on rule A211. Depending on how many participating teams you have inside your competition, it'll tell you whether there's one first place to Inspire, a first and second, or so on and so forth, depending on the size of that competition. Now, the nice thing about these judge awards is that rather than certain awards having a hierarchy over the others, after the Inspire Award, all other first places are worth 12 points, which is an excellent change. So unlike in previous years where you could be a runner-up for one award and get a first place at another, you're only able to get one award. So the maximum points you get inside of those judge awards, if you didn't get an Inspire in any of those, would be 12 points. So let's go through an example of a tale of two robots. Now, there are two teams here. We'll go with Team A, and Team A focused a lot on getting good game performance. They rank first in their qualifiers. They get 16 points for that. They are the first-ranked alliance. They get 20 points. They end up winning the playoffs. They get 40 points, and they end up receiving the uh, Innovate Award first place. So that's going to give them 16 points for quals, the max points, 20 points for alliance lead, max points, 40 points for playoff winners, max, and then 12 points to innovate. That gives them 188 points. Sorry, not 180, 88. There are a total max of 136 points out of total. So this team did pretty darn well. Team B has some strong gameplay, but they did really well in awards. So let's say they rank fourth out of 28 points. That gets them 14 points on that nominal distribution. But even though they were the second alliance, they get 19 points. So 21 minus the second alliance, 19. But in their playoff, both of them and their alliance partner, the robots, break during match three. Match six comes around for their double elimination, and they still don't get a chance to repair them, so they end up losing this one again. So they get zero points for not being at least fourth place in playoffs. But they come back and they win the second place Inspire Award, giving them 30 points. So they get 14 points for quals, 19 for their alliance pick, zero for playoffs, and 30 for Inspire Award, which gives them a total of 63 points. So overall, a totally, a, a really respectable score. So I hope that was helpful in breaking down how the new advancement works, especially those new ranking point systems when it comes to qualifiers. Uh, Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on the new advancement procedures. I personally am a big fan of them. I think it allows teams to be a little more 
well-rounded, and I'm cautiously optimistic that it's going to uh, allow teams to perform a little bit better in a more well-rounded aspect. And I'm also a huge fan that, apart from the Aspire Award, uh, no awards are judged as a greater level than another one. So teams really have to focus hard on one to be able to move on to that next uh, competition. 